Leads, leads, leads. What is happening? Simon here. So, COVID-19. Lockdown. Day three. I'm sat near the A64 and it's rush hour. It's quiet. This is episode 5 of the Working Hours podcast. This is the first episode to have any bonus material for the Patreon, which is Patreon slash Working Hours. This interview was recorded back in January of this year when the 24-hour news cycle was Tory majority and Brexit. So, episode 5. Hope you find something of value in it. Did you want to be when you grew up? Ah, dear, it was quite a few things. Um, so I wanted to be a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, just because I believe in justice, mm. <laughs> and I thought there should be a justice and in the world. And yeah. when I had like little fights with my siblings, it was all about being fair and you not <laughs> f- treating me fair. So I'm like, I'm going to be a lawyer and make sure people are treated fairly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that was my dream. <laughs> okay. What stopped you? Uh, Law school too expensive. Or? It's it's like it's not only about money, but it's about there is limited space for university to accept students. So you have to be either really really good, yeah, or have somebody who you know, or enough money to bribe them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, uh, but that's probably what stopped me. And then I, I left country. Because I couldn't get to the university I wanted. Yeah. Uh, studied the course. So then I plead, <laughs> you know, homeland and went to UK. Yeah. And take different direction in the life. Okay. Did you start studying over here then? Um, first, I just learned the English. Yeah. Because I, I learned English at home, but it was really passive learning. So we had Slovakian, you know, teachers. Yeah. Um. So when I come here, I, I, my grammar was fine, but I was um, the active language that was completely different. Mm. Interact with people and interact in different accents. Yeah. So that was challenging a bit. Um, so first three months, I more or less didn't understand what people are telling me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was, but then um, I was an au pair, so I was with a family. So it's quite good oh, nice, way yeah. of be you are sheltered basically you have a roof about the head and yeah. you know you so are, you're immersed in the language as well yeah and time. so you're exposed to it and my host mother she I really didn't like her because she was pushing me yeah uh, like to do and get out and she got me job in a pub and i hated her for that because i'm like <laughs> i don't understand this what if she doesn't realize <laughs> uh, but that made me to you know learn but you know quicker because yeah. After every shift, I, I just remember the words which I, could, I didn't know what they mean. And yeah. I got home and I was studying, I was translating them. And <laughs> so, and then after like three months or so, it just clicked in my head. Suddenly I started to understand yeah. what people are saying and think I could express myself. Because yeah. that was something what's really frustrating when you come to country and you, you can't express how you feel, what you want to do. Yeah. Or it's just. You're too busy thinking of. Word. Like how what's, you what's want the word yeah exactly it? like the meaning is just yeah. uh, and the words then start to come more naturally yeah uh, but the end that was it and after nine months i went back home and i never wanted to come back to uk because it was the worst summer in my life which yeah. is like 15 degrees i was just like this is not possible <laughs> 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 can't be like that were you in london the whole time then? no i was in ilkley oh right okay so I was uh, right in Addingham, yeah, the family chose me. Oh, right, yeah. So it was really nice. I mean, the house was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it was proper countryside. So it was yeah. just really, I had my, like massive room mm. uh, with the uh, roof windows and it was really beautiful. Some of the girls, they had really like smaller rooms, mm. uh, but really, really nice. Um, were the children quite young? Were... Yeah, the kids were small. That was hard work. Yeah. It was five, four, two and a half, and newborn. Yeah. Uh, so it was a lot of kids, a lot of kids. Yeah. So that's, but they liked me. I liked them. Yeah. But it's never an easy because you're seen as a competition. Mm. Um, 
within the family. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the father, he was a bit worried. He was like, maybe this is not going to work out, maybe not. Mm. Um, but he was very supportive. He was like, your English is going to be really good. Because they had Spanish uh, au pair before and she struggled with English. Yeah. Um, so he got me uh, books to study and, uh, you know, yeah. and she, she started to be really jealous. So it was level of jealousy going on. And then she didn't want me to interact with kids that much. I was more of a cleaner. Yeah. Were you, were you living then? Were you mm -hmm. staying? Right. Yeah, so that's kind of uncomfortable. I mean, did you get any opportunities to go out of the house? Did you have days off? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had uh, so two days have, off. Like, a weekend or were you have rolling days off? No, it was, uh, I think I worked uh, Tuesday till Saturday or something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, because the father, he was he had own business, so he was working even on Saturday morning, yeah. so she needed help with kids to yeah. get them about. Uh, it was more of the finding the boundaries, like you are a member of family, but you are not a member yeah. of the family. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes the insecurity of people, if they see you as a real stranger. Yeah, it's because it's an ill-defined boundary. So sometimes it's like you don't know when you're stepping over that imaginary boundary. Yeah, exactly. And where your friendliness is and they see you as a threat just because you're a young girl yeah. from some God knows where the country is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they think like we are all here to just to grab some rich guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm like 20 years older now. Yeah. <laughs> this is not my kind of cup of tea. But don't get me wrong, there are girls like that. They, they yeah. would just go for whatever. But yeah. it was more... I never had intentions. I, 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 yeah. We never had any, any open talk. And now, as a grown-up woman, when I see things different, I would be probably did, having different chat with her. Did you have any fear of that going into that role? I mean, you must have been aware of that sort of story of, of an au pair and being a living au pair did you have any fear of going to be a living au pair of like oh what if I've got some dodgy husband who's like all uh, over me I never thought of it it didn't occur to you no, at that point no not at all <laughs> I, it never crossed my mind I was... and, and no one had mentioned that sort of thing before I wasn't doing that much of research to be honest yeah. I, because it was so common for a lot of girls left like yeah. that country uh, for a few years or just to improve the language so did you see the did you see the vacancy for the role advertised over here or did you see that in Slovenia so Slovakia? it was for the agency Slovakia, Slovakia yeah. yeah so the agency because we were not allowed to come just come to we were not in European Union mm -hmm. so I had to apply for the visa yeah uh, um, so you were kind of covered by agency so the agency looked after me yeah. it was agency in Slovakia agency here yeah and the girl in here was Slovakian so she she knew the family yeah um but I think it's kind of it's a lot of things to overcome and sometimes people expect to just take things as they are mm. uh not everybody is so open-minded um, open-minded I mean it was massive difference between him and her, the approach. Yeah. And also the families were completely different. Yeah. Like his mother was just calling me darling and, mm -hmm. you know, you're so slim. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, her mom was just straight away as a threat, like, like I'm a threat to the family. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but you saw my picture. I'm like, I'm thinking you, you should have chosen somebody else and I, I didn't think that I'm like supermodel or something I'm yeah, just yeah. like in Slovakia you're just normal yeah so it's a different level of how they perceive the beauty and how they, they perceive the beauty here yeah. Uh, but yeah a, a lot of women here are extremely jealous mm. uh, but also the trust that needs building you know you don't know the person well, yeah. but it works both ways yeah. and it's just uh and also maturity, but I was quite young, I was 21. It never occurred that I would be seen as somebody, you know, threatening family of, you know, where they have four small kids. Yeah. Like, why would I do that? Yeah. It's like logically, you know, even like from whatever practicality, I wouldn't want to adopt four kids in, <laughs> in my early 20s, would I? <laughs> it's just common you sense. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Well, the, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's just to me, it was something like, why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of young guys out there, you know? <laughs> um, so that was, but towards the end, we, I think she, she was uh, not open to make it work. Yeah. Uh, maybe she was waiting for it to stop working. Um, and yeah, it was the, the finishing wasn't quite, you know, as nice. Not this, it wasn't bad, but it was just like she didn't want to pay my last pocket money. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a bit awkward, to be, you know, because they, they were really well situated for me. It wasn't yeah. about money, it was about some kind of power trip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so just something like that, whether I, I was working, I was working for her friend, mm-hmm. cleaning only like a couple of hours a week, and she gave me straight away like uh, leaving money like double money and say if you come back just work for me mm-hmm. uh, and she was lovely and she was giving me lift i wasn't driving yeah. so it was a bit more hustle for her as well yeah um so it, it all really depends on the person and who they are and how they want you to accommodate in their family and you know setting the boundaries um but yeah it yeah, was it's just how well you fit to each other, I suppose, like with, with, any, with any role. Yeah. yeah, and if kids, they, even like kids, they start to like you, it's seen as a threat. And I'm like, well, you, you can't have all an au pair if you think your au pair is a threat. Yeah. And if your kids like it, it should be seen as something positive rather than just, um, you know, yeah. that they lose it. Or feeling like, oh, I'm losing my kids or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not a replacement thing. It's more that... Well, I mean, it's a more inclusive thing, isn't it? I mean, mm. it's good that kids have that trust and have that exposure to meet more people, you know. The more people you meet, the more social skills you're going to get. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and Because he was traveling a lot, going abroad to, like, uh, Asia. Mm. So he was more open-minded to and see things a little bit differently. Mm. Um, but for people who never really, like, left the country, more or less... Other than holidays, it's kind of like we see. I don't know. It's it's just different. People have different approaches to foreigners, and uh, some people really don't like us, no matter what they say or how they act, and you know if they smile or not. They just don't like you for for the sake because you're different. It's not even personal. They just yeah, <laughs> yeah. they've decided already. Yeah, and they're just like no, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> myself with all these strange people uh so yeah it's uh, so that was the first experience like in working um uh, but also so i worked for like for, for her friends and then i worked for the in a pub and the owner of pub he was lovely he was telling me like oh you need to go to university and stuff like that so it was very encouraging but i'm like these people don't realize that in if you're outside the European Union, you've got to pay like twenty thousand pounds a year for the, you know, to yeah. study. Yeah. And so, it's, little it's things like that. From nowhere. Uh, that must have been quite a change of pace, though. Like going into a bar. I mean, even with a quiet bar, it's still going to be, you're going to be interacting. I would imagine with a lot more people than you would on a daily basis. Than oh yeah. Just the children. Oh yeah. yeah. This was. Uh, it was hard. <laughs> it was it must hard. have been another good, good challenge for your English as well, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was just most of the people were really nice because it's such a it's such a small community. Mm-hmm. Um, some people also did them Spanish or French. They were trying to talk to me in this language. I couldn't <laughs> speak them, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but I felt like an idiot, to be honest. Because I'm like, I don't understand them. And they just talk to me and it's like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, God, what are they saying? And then all the way to the kitchen, I'm thinking, what did they order? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, it sounds pretty terrible. What made you stick it out? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. I'm trying. I don't give up easily, you see. Yeah. So the challenge was that they were changing menu every, menu every week. Yeah. So I learned the menu. Yeah. And they changed it again. So I had to <laughs> learn it again. <laughs> but it was good fun. Yeah. It was just nice to get away from, basically get out from the house. Uh, I mean, it must have been nice to be 
working with more people as well because yeah. the au pair and you're very much working on your own. I mean, you, you're working kind of with other people, but you don't really have peers that you're working with or no. you can interact with. It can be quite isolated, yeah. you know, because you're home. Uh, you, you with kids and when they're small you can't sometimes even have like proper conversation mm. uh, so yeah it can get lonely mm. but yeah being in a pub it was just nice to you know yeah. um, see different people and then some evenings were really good fun yeah um, and it was extra income and it was just it was I enjoyed it to be honest yeah uh, it's more of the um basically what to do next in your life because I always wanted to do better and study and all these kind of things mm -hmm. and have a profession because mm -hmm. uh, yeah being at home it's not really a profession yeah <clears throat> um, so what is it giving you and then I was like I was I went back home but then I didn't want to move, didn't feel like I want to study in Slovakia yeah um, and then European Union, like basically Slovakia joined European Union and I could I could work. So I went back to UK mm -hmm. and got a job and it was just like the independence. Like it was more of fun. Yeah, having cash in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it must have been nice coming back because, I mean, initially English was probably a bit rusty and then, but it must have been much improved from... Yeah, it was, it was, um, I got a job... Uh, it was through agency and we were doing room keeping in uh, in Birmingham. Right. And this was good fun actually because I was working with uh, basically with friends. Yeah. Uh, so we had good laugh and uh, some of the rooms the stay they were in. But if you're doing it for summer, it's just fun yeah. rather than anything else. Uh, and you get to see other people, you know, Americans and, you know, asking for whatever they can get for free yeah. <laughs> in a five-star hotel. <laughs> 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 uh, some old ladies, they went for some kind of conference or whatever it was. <laughs> God knows, some church gathering. <laughs> like, uh, we had these trolleys and they were like, ah, oh, can I have the biscuit? And can I have the coffee? And can I have this? And then I'm like, off oh, wait, I don't mind. <laughs> So, yeah, that was fun. Uh, so it was, uh, and the, 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 actually the receptionist uh, um, who was in charge, she asked me if I want to do a reception job because she was like, your English is really good. Mm -hmm. You can just work in the, the reception. But I was like, no, I just want to go back to Slovakia. Because <laughs> 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 uh, the first couple of years I was struggling with home, being really homesick. Yeah. Uh, and that stuff being away from the family and well, friends. Especially when you, when you don't know the language at that point. I mean, you're just isolated and it's, it's never fun. It's yeah. Like, but why, why am I here? <laughs> I'm really miserable. What, what am I doing this for? Yeah, it's also the, you know, when the weekend comes, you've got the day off and like, what do you want, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, unless you've got enough of friends. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, the family factor is big because you, family means so much more mm. uh, back home like we do spend weekends together and mm. doing stuff together mm. or just be around each other so you kind of like the, the feeling of belonging yeah. somewhere yeah. having the base rather than just shared rooms or you know living yeah. in random places uh, so that's some and sometimes tolerating other people who you don't know that well or you don't know them from you know for long so that's uh it's very different way of living mm -hmm. um and that's it's impacting you like the motivation like why are you here mm -hmm. and what you want to do next yeah. and but uh yeah then it was another job when i got back and it was uh, basically in a chicken factory but i was with my sister and her boyfriend and we m i met the guys so i was with uh with my ex-boyfriend <laughs> Uh, and uh, we had just had fun. Mm. It was a really silly job. Yeah. Uh, but we just, we could earn enough and we were treated okay. Yeah. This was just, and we had a lot of, you know, we just enjoyed coming to work. Yeah. Um, but then I, God, how, for how long did I do it? Was it uh, maybe a year or so? Um then we were made redundant 
because they took on some Polish agency. They basically took people who worked for less money, um, worked in Kings Lane for a little while, um, and then had a break. So it was more like back to Slovakia again. Yeah. Uh, and then I got, then we moved to Leeds with my ex. Um, started to work in a, a assembly. So basically, plasma TVs. They were we were assembling them. Um, but was I that, was that still in Leeds. It was in. Uh, so we were commuting, and I was doing college, part time college. Yeah. Um, and I got quite a good position because I was like kind of like flow technician. So I learned all the stages of assembling. And if somebody was sick or just needed a break, you know, mm. a comfort break, I was basically doing their job. Yeah. It was all about memorizing all the screws and whatever. But yeah. It was a bit technical and uh, actually it was it was an uh, interesting job to do. Yeah. Uh, and the, the culture there, the Japanese culture was so, they were so respectful. Yeah. So every morning they come to the production line and they, they just say hello to you, you know. Um, so, and they were very happy with, you know, the way we were working. And so did you need anything to get into that role there or you just applied for it? And... It was through agency, basically they did with... Uh, English and math, and then uh, uh, basic, uh, like, uh, they're giving us, like, screws to screw in on, like, little boards. Yeah. So they were ch they were checking your, you know, left and right hand skills mm. and stuff like that. So you just, you, it was really interesting. It's, like, exercising, like, yeah. Lego or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, I like that job. Yeah. Um, well, you were doing something, you were building something. Yeah, it wasn't like, and I wasn't just like standing on one stage and doing the same old thing all day long. I was doing all different aspects of things uh, yeah. and uh, helping. And in the end, I was helping the technicians, yeah. finding the faults and, you know, trying to repair them. And so it was good. So uh, did you, were you were basically, as soon as you got there, you started getting into all different areas of the actual role and yeah they just picked me for some reason i don't even know i can't even remember it so many years i just they just picked me to do that role yeah um uh, and the um actually the line manager was really good she was a really nice lady and then i switched the shifts it was from a night shift on on a day shift mm -hmm. we went on night shift here because i started college after a few months and then i went on night shift and the line manager hated me <laughs> just because she fancied my boyfriend and I'm like this is not good and she started to say that I'm really you know crap at my job and I, I'm not initiating I'm just standing there doing nothing yeah. and they wanted to just you know push me down yeah, yeah. Um, so that was I was actually really upset because I'm like how come I'm really good for wine like manager and then suddenly I become really lazy yeah. and whatever and I'm like I was really happy after that uh, yeah. They finished the night shift and I'm like, okay, I'm going. Thanks God, because I was carrying on with my college. Um, so then we were working in Leeds. I got a job in, in packing and then everybody was so laid back. My line managers, I'm like, this is peace. <laughs> I was just like packing small components into yeah. the, you know, either jiffy bags or, you know, boxes. But mostly it's just like really light ones. Yeah. This is heaven. This is just like music on, and you know the line managers are really good laugh. They, mm. You know they come to have a chat because you had like your own workbench. Yeah. Uh, it was just so relaxed. I worked only four hours as well. Yeah. <laughs> it was <That's> nice. nice. <laughs> no night shift, not zombie eyes. You yeah. know. So you had more free time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, they also appreciated when you worked hard. Yeah. So they started to, you know, they always picked the best people to work weekends if yeah. you wanted to earn. Ex it was extra money. It was, you know. Um, so I did work out seven days a week, but then uh, dropped Sundays. I'm like, I can't do that Sunday. No. I need to rest. Uh, and then I got a job in sales. In, in mm. after, That was my line and manager. He was like, uh, they are recruiting because they're expanding business to Eastern Europe. Uh, they were looking for native speaking people to work in sales. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started with helping to trans with Czech translations on of the website they were launching. Mm -hmm. 
so I got to know a bit more people, people in publishing and then I got a job in sales and um, that was actually really interesting job to do for me. Did they, did they give you sales training then? Did they send you on a course or anything or they just, how did they transition you? Basically first it was some kind of technical training they gave about electronics. Did you, were you quite familiar with the product line by then from, from yeah, packing? Yeah, yeah basically. Because you have packed everything, so you have known yeah, yeah. what they were. But they did give us, a, give us the training about what they are. Mm. So many years, I can't even remember how we did it. Basically, it was just like, and I did the translations mm. on the web, so I knew what they're doing as well, like how it works and stuff yeah, like that. So you were really kind of embedded in all the info. Yeah, it was good. Easy, just getting to know. I knew the system. It was just different, basically different aspect of the same system which we were using in a, in the warehouse because mm -hmm. I was doing partially export, and in export you had to enter, you know, use the system mm -hmm. to get the paperwork and you know dispatch the goods abroad. Um, so I was familiar with that. It was really easy yeah. to get into it. Um, and I was there for five years and it was the build, the team we built, it was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, so firstly, we, we were in the sales very really down and like in comparison to other countries, we were in Slovakia, wasn't doing that well. Yeah. And we were doing it with Czech Republic, so it was like all together. Uh, but then we separated and I had a colleague, a manager in Slovakia and we just I think we did, did the right thing. We were not really pushing on people because we could understand the different culture. Like people don't want to be like approach on the phone and yeah. with some stranger and starting to say, like, do you want this and that? And, yeah. you know, start to like really like heavy sales kind yeah. of tactics. Yeah. Um, so it was more about, you know, building the relationship yeah. with them. And because you know the culture, it's it's much easier rather than if it would be somebody completely speaking the language but not understanding the, the, the way the people are functioning or companies are working. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we built a really good uh, relationship. we done really well as well. So th the business took off and the sales were just like tripled. Mm -hmm. And we were, one year we were sales of the year uh, sales team of the year so that was quite a nice achievement yeah, yeah. Um, going for exhibitions back home uh, going to see customers um, and yeah that, it was really good but as I say that the team was so good as well it was probably the best working team I had so it sounds like within that role you went from I mean you were saying it was good fun on the production line <clears throat> Like going through and you were only doing four hours and then, I mean, building a successful sales team abroad um, <laughs> doesn't sound like the sort of thing you can do in four hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just full time job. <laughs> so a bit more responsibility at that point. I mean, how how was that journey from like, oh, this is an okay job to like, oh, they want me to do more stuff to like, oh, I'm running like a huge part of it. How, how did that go? How did that feel for you? I mean, were you just interested in the opportunities that were coming along was it the challenge that interested you or was it just it was the basically self-realization because mm. in a warehouse i could because you don't really use the language mm. all day long you're basically working uh, by hands or with hands and then uh, i started to see like my, my english is getting worse because mm. i don't speak basically all day yeah, long yeah yeah uh, and I'm like, if I and don't... I suppose when you did, you were speaking to colleagues in your native tongue. Yeah, also, oh, well, in English as well, a lot. Because yeah. they were Polish and I couldn't really, yeah. couldn't really speak Polish no. at the time. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, if I, I was telling myself, like, I can do better than working in a warehouse. And I'm like, either I get a job in the office or I go back home, mm -hmm. um, back to university, because it was kind of like crossroad. At the time, if I wouldn't get the job in a sales, I would have gone yeah. back home. Um, just because, you know, you've got basically brains to use and you start to feel like, okay, this is not the right yeah. direction for me. So that was prob that was the decision, you know, yeah. taking on the sales job and then 
try to make it work, uh, invested into it quite a lot. Um, but we also build a relationship between us, like the team. It, um, they're really good guys and we get we got along and uh, as I said, they're really funny. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, if it's sometimes you just click with people yeah. and make it work. That's what I was going to say. It sounds a bit like, you know, everything kind of fell into place. That yeah, yeah. With the right bunch of people at the right time and with the right opportunities that came along then. Exactly. Yeah. So, but after five years, I was like, oh, bored. <laughs> <laughs> Not burnt out. It just, uh, it, it wasn't challenging enough anymore. It's just in the sales is basically, you feel like a bit of a hamster because you achieve the target and they, they just lift it up. Yeah. You lift, they you achieve that, so they lift it up again. Yeah. So just like moving, you know, they're lifting it up and up, but yeah. it, effectively you're not doing anything it's differently. Just increase your productive output is yeah. basically the metric. It's not like, oh, develop new skills, learn new stuff. No, so it's basically just chasing money for yeah. the corporation. Yeah. Uh, that's how it felt. It wasn't giving me any anything new. Um, so but, uh, I mean, initially it was though, I mean, for the, the, the fact that, so how long were you in sales? Five years. Five years. I mean, the fact that you did it for five years, uh, you know, I mean, there were new targets to create and stuff. So it, it was fulfilling at that point. I mean, you wouldn't have done it for so long if it wasn't. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I think the team played the biggest, you know, the part of it if, yeah. because if we had, we really were getting along. Yeah. Um, and with the other teams as well. So basically had a good time mm. coming to work and being there. Yeah. Um, so it's easy enough, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so then moved on from there. Um, so what did you do next? <laughs> uh, another one. It was uh, basically they were opening new excellence center in Poland. So they made us redundant, right. uh, which worked for me really well because yeah. I was like, I was really ready to move on yeah. to different role. And so I went into purchasing mm. uh, and I worked on uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. Mm. Um, and then I, I was there for three years and it was different, basically different. So what are you buying the components I was, to make them? Yeah, yeah, buying components and then distributing the ready product from a manufacturer into different locations. Mm -hmm. So like Singapore, you know, Australia, America. Yeah. Um, that was, I, I did enjoy the job, but it was really different because yeah. it was only me and my line manager. It was two of us. So it was, it was quite lonely. Yeah. Um, so at this point, are you... In terms of the, the sort of tools that you're working with at this point, so you, you, are you mainly like email and telephone by now? So just email, telephones, meeting rooms. Yeah. Are you flying much at this point? Do much travel? Uh, no. So the traveling stopped as well. Before in sales, I was traveling a bit. Yeah. Back home, I was three, four times a year. Yeah. Uh, see visiting customers, obviously, together visiting my family, but. Yeah, with, uh, with this job, I didn't get to s to travel that much. I was uh, office-based, more or less 100%. Mm. Uh, if we went maybe once to see a supplier, but probably I went twice in a three years. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was very much an office-based uh, computer every day. And yeah. I started also, I was where I started university mm. part-time. So after work, um, I was commuting to Sheffield twice a week in the afternoons. So yeah, always taking on a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was it was good because at the, t at the point when I was in sales, I was basically the, the last year I knew I have to move on and I, they had quite a good program about mentoring. Yeah. So you could find a mentor in a company and basically who could help you out with moving on or developing certain skills. So I was lucky enough to find a mentor who was really, really helpful uh, and helped me to be, find out what I actually want to do or, you know, at least next steps mm. or next challenge. Because coming to work and being bored, it's really not nice uh, or feeling like you're, you know, you're not using the skills or you want yeah. to, or you stop enjoying it, basically. Yeah. So 
purchasing was the it was nicer side it wasn't as sales is very much you have to be in people's face basically yeah you have to be pushy to, yeah. and purchasing you basically on the other side uh so you choose and you buy and you you are the one you are the yeah. customer yeah. so you can you know <laughs> yeah. it's it's much nicer side to be on uh, yeah. less pressure uh and less boredom as well it's not so repetitive yeah it was manufacturing um went to see the side i went to see how it works uh and it was i was actually proud to be part of something big because the raspberry pi basically changed uh, the way pe- kids are being educated in england mm. uh so it's basically product which is it shapes a lot of you know things uh, and it was like it was such a massive impact on the in the market yeah um uh, so you uh, you were so proud like feeling like oh, being part of something really big yeah. um, and shaping future so that's something you know a good motivator yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah it was it was good uh, it's just uh, I was in a company for nine years yeah. uh, basically knew everybody from a cleaner to CEO yeah. <laughs> it's just a, uh, so it started to feel a bit more claustrophobic mm. And, you know, when you stay, that's why I'm like, it's really healthy to change companies because you become, you think this is the worst thing, you know, like this isn't working. That's not working. You start to be critical, uh, how the systems are not working yeah. and what could be done better, you know, you know, in different ways. When, say I'm, when you say that, I'm thinking of being in a company long enough to know not necessarily the faults you know the things that a place is doing badly but the things that they do badly that you know won't change Mm. because you know the place well enough that you're like nobody's ever going to change (laughs) that like it's really bad it'd be easy enough to change nobody's ever going to change it's that kind of thing does is that familiar Uh, yeah (laughs) it is um and sometimes they're like, you just become like the. It's know. just part of the nature of some firms. It's just there's there's certain things that are part of that firm of just they do this thing this way for but for no reason that you can see. Mm. Yeah. But you start to think like, it must be better somewhere else. Yeah. And that's not always the case, but you need to like if you sometimes you just need to try and yeah. find out. You basically get out and try different things. So you're not scared of going into something worse? <laughs> I thought it must be better. <laughs> <laughs> like, definitely. Can't so, you, be. so you're approaching it as an optimist of just... Definitely. If I move, if I move to somewhere else, it's, I, I mean, it's going to be new, it's going to be new experience. It's got to be better. Yeah. At least the, the hope is there that things are going to be better. And yeah. uh, um, it's more of the personal, like I could not do that much because yeah. it was just me and my boss and then I could cover his work while he was away but I would never get that much recognition for it yeah so it was it's starting to be also the you know the salary yeah. question like I was because uh, in sales I was earning more money than in purchasing yeah and uh, you, basically you start to calculate all the pluses and minuses and you know what is it giving you and what's not giving you yeah. so you suddenly realize oh god every year I, I'm basically earning less and less money year on year yeah. and I've been in this company for god knows how many years yeah. and I know enough I know you're confident in your skill set and you know you can achieve more mm-hmm. but there is this ceiling where they won't let you go any farther mm-hmm. And I think it's happening uh, a lot in a lot of companies when they see like all oh, the the employees there for God knows how many years they have to be happy with this salary or recognition. Yeah. Uh, they go somewhere else and suddenly they have thirty percent more, you know, annual income. Yeah. And I think it's it's quite common. They don't appreciate people who are loyal. Yeah. Uh, to the company. Yeah. Or they take long time to do it. To say, oh, they won't leave because of the benefits, pension scheme, 
um, extra holidays they got but sometimes you get to the point when it's just not enough because you have to live now yeah um and like in case i will be ill yeah. for six months i will have like full you know salary being paid every month you don't think like that because especially when you are young you think like I have to, I have these outcomes, outgoings, I've got the university to pay, I've got car to pay, I've got mortgage to pay. So you just need to be, live more in present. Yeah. Um, that's what's, this was the pushing factor as well, like the financial side of. Um, more things you pay for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the market, I mean, the prices are pushed out. Pushed so up. had you, had you bought property at this point then? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, yeah, I started uni, bought the house, <laughs> and left my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, left my boyfriend, then I started university, I left my boyfriend, then I bought a house a year later, so just full on. Yeah. And I didn't think, like, I would not be able to do well or succeed. Well, you were going, yeah, you were going from strength to strength, though, weren't you? You were, like, you were on a trajectory of, like, each year was yeah. better. I never crossed my mind that I could not do it. Yeah. I was like, I can't do it. I wasn't even doubting it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just things were working out, although they took time. Yeah. But the frustration, I think the biggest frustration is uh, the salary when you can't, you know, get the money you need for life. It's not only like you want the money, you need the money. Yeah. Uh, so. This was, you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just had to check the time because I know. We I'm talked forever. That you, well, I'm conscious that you have things to do. It's later fine. Well. Um, okay, no, this is really good. Um, <laughs> Lots of interesting stories. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, well, I mean, does that bring us pretty much up to date? So, more or less, yeah. because I went to work in where I got more money. Yeah. Although they suddenly they had money in the business to give me because I was just being promo I was promoted in uh -huh. they wanted me to stay. I still wanted to leave because I'm like, I really need to get out. Yeah. I just felt like suffer you know, like cabin fever. You've got like it's just yeah, like just you, you need respect. to see different yeah. people, you need to see different things. But do you think I mean, was there any room for you to to do something like a sabbatical if I take six months or a year off and come back? Was that something that would have occurred to you or is it something that like, they, they discussed with you? They didn't discuss. They told me if, I, if, it, if things are not going to work out, you can come back or they take me back. But I was just... And the things didn't work out in the new job. Mm. But I never got back. Because <laughs> uh, I was just like too proud to admit it didn't work out. Well, would it feel like you were having a step back as well? I mean, you, you, even though you wouldn't necessarily be... But would it feel like... You were going back on sort of your own journey, as it were. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was just like, no, I have to just keep going. Yeah. I can't go backwards, as you said. Yeah. Um, because I have the goal to achieve, and I know I, I achieved to be a manager, and that's what I wanted to do. Like, yeah. I really wanted to be able to shape things my way. Yeah. Or put my ideas. Yeah. In there, um, and then I was going into another business, maternity cover. When I was managing team as well, mm -hmm. um, and I could see different setup, the family business, how it's run, and how much more open talk is going on, and you know mm -hmm. how the changes are being, you know, done in the in that kind of business where it's really personal as yeah. well. Um, so that was they had a really good setup when it comes to support and manager, uh, you know, the layers. Yeah. Uh, so the manager was really like, he was so great. He was so people orientated. He could, if you were struggling, he didn't make you feel like you can't manage. Mm -hmm. he, he supported you. And he was like, any issue, anybody. His office was always full of people because people <laughs> were coming like, what am I supposed to do? Like, can you give me advice? And he was really people orientated yeah. manager. Uh, so that's something what I think is really critical in an organization to make it work. And, and they were also recognizing the business um, is aging. Like, okay, we are the layer of management who is aging and now we are getting closer to our pension. Yeah. 
you know, retirement time, yeah. what we're going to do next, how do we make sure the business is carrying on yeah. uh, and how to, you know, nurture the new generation yeah. of management. But I can see in a lot of previous companies, they were just not thinking about it. They yeah. were they, they, they see the young people and talented people as uh, basically as a threat to their own role. Mm. So uh, it wasn't the nurturing side in, in those businesses was not existing. Mm. Uh, mostly because of the personal, you know, issues. Yeah, and I would imagine in those other sort of industries where they are just, you know, they're thinking. Well, my thinking is that their thinking is, well, we just hire graduate. You know, we just hire people who've got experiences at that role. You know, I, we hire another CFO or we hire another COO mm. from another company, whereas that company is thinking more about, well, you, you need to know the industry and the landscape and our business and how we do things. Exactly. So we need people to come up through our business. But it's also what they were basically saying, you can learn anything you want as long as your attitude is right, mm. which I think is absolutely you know, true. Because if people are not interested to fit in when it comes to culture, you know, Okay, this this company people are very hardworking, but they are very loyal to the family as well, mm -hmm. uh, and they respect their values. And you have to respect the company value, otherwise, um, how do you fit in there? Mm. But also, like, if you've got the you know skill gap, they haven't seen it. Okay, we have to replace this person because she's rubbish at this and that. So okay, we send you for training, we invest into you, and we want you to succeed. We want you to do you know, you to do well. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I think it was very healthy. Yeah. Um, and the, they were engaging people on the more senior roles who believed in that business. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't be bothered. Or, or you know, this and that, overcritical. But some people just come to work to mourn and like talk, you know, criticize. Mm -hmm. But themselves, they never do that extra mm -hmm. thing or extra input into the business. They don't basically believe in it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, when I, when I left it, it, they were really, even after I left, they're always really supportive. Mm -hmm. So when I needed something, uh, references or whatever, it was yeah. really nice. Are you still in touch with anyone? From yeah. yeah. Still in touch with, uh, quite a few people to be honest. So yeah, which is a good sign. Yeah. yeah. And then the last work I went to, it was like the leadership didn't exist basically um, so if you if you're in a role of manager or if you even like normal you know base you know employee you've got to have some kind of vision mm -hmm. you've got to give people directions but if you're, if you're a manager who manages a team and you don't get the right direction or the support you are set up to fail mm -hmm. um, that's how it was it's simple mm -hmm. I mean business is not rocket science it's not like you know yeah. You don't have to be overly clever to know how things are working or if things are not working. But yeah. uh, sometimes it's just are people not in the right place. Yeah. Uh, and if you, when I started, basically it was like, it was nothing. Mm. I come in and it was like no induction, no directions. Yeah. Uh, basically found my own ways to to survive and get the support from different teams yeah uh, but i've been told i don't care by my line manager mm -hmm. when i had an issue and it was like a very different way of working and i'm like uh, it's a bit of a shock yeah it was it was a comparison to the previous job i'm like uh okay <laughs> what am i supposed to do now <laughs> this is difficult <laughs> Should uh, I then? <laughs> I'm like, well, and uh, I kept trying. I'm this kind of silly personality who always tries to succeed and tries to do well. Uh, Why is that silly? It's just because you're killing yourself for something. What's not? <laughs> when you get to the point when you realize you can't do it, yeah, you just have to let go. And I'm not good at it. Yeah. So letting go and saying like, okay, you've got to move on. And I think finding the way, like sometimes when to move on, yeah. 
don't restrict yourself okay i haven't i've been in the business for six months i should not be moving the walls no if you know it's not healthy you've got to move on yeah yeah don't wait for the one year yeah. to see it on your cv like okay you're being consistent in your jobs because you are consistent sometimes the the surroundings is not consistent and yeah. there you know you are not set up you are not in a in a set in a setup where you can succeed and do yeah, well. Yeah, you don't have to stay at every place for five years to prove that exactly. you're metal. Yeah. So uh, that's, you, your work speaks for itself anyway. Exactly. So uh, that's learning curve, really. Yeah. So I've been through quite a few companies, so you probably know what what's working for me. And if you... For some people, it can be working in any company fine, Like, uh, but I'm kind of person who likes probably have the higher values and believe in higher values and respecting people uh, but there are companies very which are aggressive you mean you're respecting people as well as earning money and, exactly yeah, yeah. so you are respected and money, appreciated as well yeah yeah um, but yeah some companies are like they pay you a lot of money but they treat you really badly mm. um, and people are happy there but I know, you know, what to look for and what's not because the current job is so just a support. Mm. Sometimes you don't realize, you know, little things. They just it was about timesheet. So my line manager was like, Oh, the agency is contacting and they're asking for the timesheet and you we don't do it right way. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing it right way. I'm sending it. And he was like, Don't worry, I'll sort it out. And I'm like you know, it just takes the, you know, little hustle away from you. <laughs> you just like, don't worry, you know, I'll do it. And, and I didn't have it. So I was just like, okay, <laughs> I'm in a bit of shock to the system. Okay, somebody's actually, you know, looking after me as an employee. Yeah. Uh, not just telling you, oh, you do it, you do it, you sort it out, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, and... You've done this wrong, do it right, I'm not going to help you. Yeah so the support is great you know it's underrated mm. definitely mm. and and yeah if you don't get it and you are in a, you get into difficulties in life difficulties and mm. you have got to go to work and you have a lot of things to you know sort out in personal life as well and you don't get the support and you, you you're just going to collapse like yeah. No, that's just not bearable because you spend so many hours at work uh, and you've got pressures there and you've got pressures at home you just like it's no There's way no, you, escape. no so yeah for me the, the support is critical yeah. yeah don't really have much additional to say this week or on this episode um, I'm trying to get what I've recorded already actually up um, but it's a bit of a challenge motivating myself um, tending to be distracted by a lot of things pulled in a lot of different directions even though I'm essentially just stuck at home with nothing to do um, so yes hope everyone's getting through this okay hope everyone's managing to get in touch with people hope someone's eventually listening to these um, and yes, I will be back with the next episode as soon as possible again. Um, once I've got these initial ones up for the first volume, then I will, um, for volume two, which will be after the first 10 episodes, will be a bit of a change. So hopefully it should be more of a um, an organized production for them and a bit more of a regular release schedule. But I can't promise that. Um, Partially, I also want to do this because I object to some degrees to the regimenting of things through work. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how reality interfering with our general media narratives is going to affect our social realities. So, um, I mean, there, there was always an intent with this that I would be recording stuff through basically an acceleration of climate crisis, 
and all of the additional things that will be driven by that. Um, so I fully expect after this, I'm not a person who's thinking that there will be any normals to go back to. Um, there was no normal to go back to after 9-11 or uh, 2008 or Iraq or 10 years of austerity uh, or Brexit. Um, so yeah, there will be no normal to return to. The only normal will be just the media cycle continuing and moving on to something else. But I expect to see a lot more of these sorts of events and I expect them to see them happening not just at one at a time um, some people probably aware of the earthquake which was in I don't know you can look it up there was an earthquake in the middle of this so that was an additional thing going on um, yes this is a bit of a wondery one so I might re-record this <coughs> um, but yeah that's it so I'm now watching four magpies fighting in a tree um, I'm trying to see if that's a pigeon anyway um, yeah sorry it's gone, all gone a bit Adam Buxton uh, but without a dog so uh, yes hope everyone's staying safe and sane and uh, yeah take care everyone and uh, yes best of luck to all of us okay see you well I will chat at you next time okay <laughs>